not so deep, shallow shower thoughts with WAPTEC. This video will be about firearms and usefulness and people's starting points. Warning, uh, really the majority of what I know about firearms is bolting them down to a bench and seeing what bullets and guns actually do and noticing that you really should do a bench or vice test on a gun before you talk about its usefulness. And the ammunition can affect this very greatly. Let's point out some basics of how firearms work in modern cartridges with smokeless powder, and also black powder has some of these characteristics. The maximum possible range you can fire a cartridge to that will cause an injury, but not death, can be many miles from where you fire from. The maximum range can be over a mile for accidental lethal injury, or potentially lethal injury. The maximum range that you can have a group of cartridges or bullets or guns of a particular variety, or just guns in general, actually give you a grouping of six feet on a target can be under a mile away, and getting a two-foot group usually is at ranged at hundreds of yards maximum, not in the thousand-yard range. And getting a group that's small enough that you can punch holes and dimes and that sort of thing may be much, much shorter, or it could be out to hundreds of yards. It all depends on the gun and not necessarily how expensive it is. A really expensive gun can have a worn-out barrel and give you a range of shots of a foot across while bolted in place with bad ammo 30 feet away. The maximum self-defense range will be under 100 feet, because um, you can't claim to be doing self-defense sniper training. So, here we go. <clears throat> Let's talk about the training and rules and drill asso uh, associated with a person named Tulier. It was a drill, training exercise, or the 21-foot rule, or the 7-yard rule, which is not really what it is. This was an observation made by doing something simple. What's the fastest a Average trained police officer can fire two shots at a target that's charging it. Let's try the first thing. Static target. Cop sees the threat, pulls the sidearm, and is able to fire an effective shot twice to stop a charging attacker. Based on the average officer timing to draw a sidearm and hit center of mass of a man-sized target at approximately 18 inches across and 26 inches tall, which is the body diameter and shape of the target in many cases, around that, and being able to hit at least an area that would highly likely hit and do it. It didn't matter if they fired six times or only twice, did they get two shots, center of body mass, vital organ. Took 1.5 seconds. So they figured out how long it would take a person to run for 1.5 seconds if they were already in motion. Worst case scenario for an average person doing it. That means they had some adrenaline and went from a standing position charging. How far could they traverse in 1.5 seconds? The average person could traverse 1.5 seconds at 21 feet or 7 yards. Or 7 feet every 5 seconds or half a second or something. That's the attacker's run and punch distance as 7 yards as a time of 1.5 seconds. So, if an attacker was closer than 21 feet, it was assumed that you couldn't draw and fire your gun the way they were doing it. Then some other things were noticed. The world's record for quick drawing is not done by doing what you see in the movies or what you're trained to do, unless you're a cop. Here's your gun in the holster. Bang! You don't draw it, put it up to where you have a level aiming area or anything like that. You do it in stages. The first thing you do is, as soon as it clears the holster, aim it at the target with your arm over here. Then you bring your arms together at your abdomen, shortest distance where you're pointing, to where it's doing this, but you're not looking down the sights. Then you bring it up to chest level, to where you can instinctively shoot much more accurately. They found that that improved the accuracy a large amount, just like putting it at the abdomen and grabbing it with both hands would do as well. This also meant that if you were being attacked, 
You could literally have the person land on the gun barrel. And then finally aiming it to where you get a high accuracy shot. If you've got enough time to get it up to that point, they're far enough away that maybe you're just pointing it at them to get them to not charge you. Now these are all valid things to discuss and may cause an argument in a court case. But let's continue. That's one, one massive improvement for shooting by quick drawing out of the holster. 0.3 seconds. Suddenly they getting that far into the run at you and they have a gun pointed at them and you can fire it. The next thing they noticed is moving attackers have a momentum in their pathway, not towards you if you dodge them. If you're holding still, if you're not moving towards them or at a certain angle, you can just divert really quickly. You move out of the way, dodge them. Now, what's the average self-defense range for a lethal encounter between a police officer and an attacker? 11 feet. They didn't specify who caught the lethal end of it because it was the same each. The average 50% of the fatalities, whether it was the attacker or the police officer, happened because they were 11 feet apart or less. Next, self-defense shootings. What are the averages for them? It's called the rule of threes in some cases. Three yards or nine feet. Three shots, three seconds. The person's not being charged at. The person has a shorter range. It's nine feet. The person is able to fire three times instead of just twice on target. Yeah, um, the police officers were firing strict regimens and rules because they have to, but the average home defense situation was blast, 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 the person's run away or the person's been taken out. And I, again, I'm going to point this out, the most likely usage of a gun you bought for self-defense isn't going to be to shoot someone else. Statistics are very clear on this. Don't own a gun unless you really need to. But anyway, let's move on. By using the trained quick draw position and then going to the belly and then going to chest level and then aiming, ideally, they were able to reduce the amount of time that was needed to be shot at. But the 21-foot rule isn't a real fixed number by doing this multi-stage draw. With perfect lighting, no time constraints or stress, testing. You must align the muzzle and press the trigger, disturbing the alignment as little as possible because... Aiming like this, but when you pull the trigger, it's doing this, isn't going to do you much good. You'd have to shoot a one-inch group, five rounds, at six to ten feet. Now that's 72 to one ratio, or around a one-foot group at 100 yards, if you were to think of it as minute of barn. Uh, at ten feet, it's actually smaller than that. It's about a six-inch group, but you get the idea. So let's start from the beginning. Change your drills to where you're firing at 5 feet, 10 feet, and 20 feet, and see if you have a lacking of ability in a weird location like suddenly you're a shit shot at 5 feet, but you're great at 21. That's actually something that was found out. People need to train at fixed distances that are body lengths. One body length, two body lengths, three, four. And then after that, it's considered not really self-defense range. Again, if you have to put a scope on your rifle and adjust it for windage, in a self-defense situation, that's probably not your defense. So, military, law enforcement, competition, concealed carry permit shooters can all shoot that well. Five rounds, six and eight, that's out of six shots. Five rounds at six to ten feet, a one-inch group, which you would think would happen if you just sat the gun down in a clamp and pulled the trigger, right? How many of those people, fully trained people, could do this? 15% of them were able to achieve that. They were fine at long distance, but they couldn't shoot short. Most of the shootings with ordinary civilians are less than 10 feet. Most with cops are around 11. Train for 5 feet, train for 10 feet, and trade for 20 feet on separate days and see where you're lacking. Also, clamp the gun in a vice to see if it's shooting badly. If it's shooting badly, you're responsible for every bullet. Every bullet has a law has a has a freebie lawyer attached to it. It's just not your lawyer. Make sure the damn gun hits a target. It can't be one minute of barn. It has to at least do a decent grouping. And again, 
if a bullet can go several miles downrange and still kill somebody, maybe you shouldn't be using it for short-range shooting. Use a different cartridge. Fatter bullet. Slower moving. Maybe having more stopping power. Make sure it's hollow point. But anyway, let's move on. Seeing how most self-defense rounds have a muzzle blast that barely moves a sheet of paper at 6 feet, you can do these without excuse at 5, 10, and 20 foot drills first. Then you're good to do self-defense sniper training if you want to do that. Please feel free to use that joke and make a t-shirt. Without allowances for firing angle, bullet tumble, air friction slowdown, deflection, blades of grass, hitting a turd out of a bird, a flat trajectory bullet, how far does it fall in a half a second regardless of muzzle velocity? Same distance it does at no speed, 5 feet. It works out to uh, a 5 foot drop being 0.557 seconds. Now, what does that mean in general? That's a 60 inch drop or 5 foot drop or whatever. So if a bullet is traveling out of the barrel and it can go 1,000 feet per second at 0.557 seconds, it will hit the ground. And that works out to a little over 557 feet away, it'll hit the dirt if you fire it dead level with your eye sockets, most likely. A little over, a little under. That's gravity drop. If you use really high velocity bullets, it'll drop further down, but and you'll have to account for less drop to it. You can get bullets that drop so little that essentially, by the time you would see a bullet drop of one human being, that's how tall the the blade on the on the iron sights are on your rifle or even a pistol. One minute of angle as a target hit group at what yardage? How much of a group of bullets will you have hit if you bolt the thing in a vice? Now, I don't want to hear about how you have to do real-world shooting. If your gun is shooting a grouping that's 8 feet across at 60 feet, it's a shitty gun. It doesn't matter how well you're aiming. Test the gun and find good ammo that'll fit it to give you a tight group, and then go from there. Or get a gun that likes cheap ammo, and by the way, the cheap ammo sometimes does better than the expensive because it's made for a different gun besides the one you have. One minute of angle, that's 1.047 inch grouping at 100 yards to 300 feet or 3,600 inches or a ratio of 3,600 to 1. That's the ratio. Or it's actually 3,438 to 1 is the actual meaning for one minute of angle. But we just call it a one inch group at 100 yards. Now if your gun does that, well, bolt it in a vise and you can do a two inch group. That means you're half as accurate as the gun. Most guns are more accurate than a human being could ever be. They over-design them. A two-inch group at 200 yards, six-inch group at 600 yards. This is six inches. And an 18-inch group, the width from shoulder to shoulder, at 1,800 yards. And a 26-inch tall target silhouette like that is the body. Front sights can be selected or moved so it's a torso or head width at any range you want to. Many are between 0.052 and 0.07 inches wide. Let's make it 0.06 inches. The rear sight is 4 inches from the buttstock. The gun's overall length is 28 inches. That means that your sight distance from you know one point to another is 14 inches. That's 233 to 1 ratio. What target diameter is the front sight post covering up at what yardage? What size target? A 6-inch target, about 40 yards. 16-inch target at 100 yards. An 18-inch wide target at 116 yards, shoulder to shoulder. And at 300 yards, it's 48 inches wide. Overshooting may get you in prison. Overpenetration may get you sued. Underpenetration may get you killed. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. This has been random stuff I looked up about firearms, the practicality of it, and my advice. Get a big bore pistol that doesn't have a huge amount of range, but has a lot of start up stopping power at short range. Because if you're shooting at something 100 yards away, it's not a self-defense situation. You're hunting or you're murdering. Good day. Good luck. Goodbye.